Oh, hi, good evening. Today is March 31st, 2017. My name is Joan Williams, and I'm a student in the Masters for Biblical Studies at South Florida Bible College here in Deerfield Beach, Florida. I'm currently enrolled in this wonderful class called Old Testament Survey, and as part of the requirement for that class, I am asked to do a five to eight minutes video, which can be seen on social media by my professor and by others. The Bible verse I've chosen is Jeremiah 29, verse 11, where the Lord said, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plan to give you hope and a future. And the topic of my video is, there is no guessing in God's plans. You may be wondering why I chose this Bible verse of all the Bible verses in the Old Testament, and I'm going to give you a little explanation as to why. About two and a half years ago, I attended a conference in Fort Lauderdale, which was hosted by um, a church sister of mine by the name of Monique Strahan Murray. Towards the end of the conference, I confided in, Maureen, in, in uh, Monique about some personal issues I was having, and um, she blurted out Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Um, to be honest, before that, I really just skimmed over that Bible verse. She said to me that she was so confident in um, God's plans for her life that she has this Bible verse inscribed on the mirror in her bathroom to remind us daily, to remind her daily of God's plans for her and the fact that she has no need to worry. I took that very seriously and when I went home, I read it a couple of times and I wrote it on a paper and I put it in my prayer closet. From day to day, when things come up against my way, when I don't have what I want, when I, when um, things don't work out according to the time frame I set for myself, according to goals that I set for myself, I am reminded on a daily basis that what is important is the plans that God outlined for my life in Jeremiah 29, and it's not based on my time frame, my vision, or even my desires. I just want to speak to you about some other persons in the Bible who have transcribed to God's Jeremiah 29 for their life and how it worked out for them. Let's look at the story of Joseph. This story has been preached in every church, every church over and over again. We all know that it was part of God's plans when Joseph had that dream, when he was um, deceived by his brothers and tossed in that pit. When he ended up in Potiphar's house and when Potiphar's wife tried to sleep with him and if it wasn't for his integrity, God's plan would not have materialized in his life in order for him to get from that pit to the palace, um, to the prison and then to the palace. Let's also look at the life of David. When David was given the mandate to go fight Goliath, David could have said, I am afraid I can't do it. I mean, so many were defeated. So many were already killed in that battle. But David knew in his heart that it was part of God's plans for his life. And David took on this big task. He actually killed Goliath. And we know what happened next. He was later elevated to the position of king, which was the highest position in that land. Just in case you men are thinking that women don't have these opportunities too when they depend on God's plans, let's look at a few women in the Bible who have succeeded because they listened and waited on God's plans for their life. The first two we look at is Ruth and Naomi. We all know the story of Ruth and Naomi, how um, Naomi's husband and her two sons died, and one of these son was Ruth's husband. Just imagine if when Naomi asked Ruth to leave her alone and go her way, Ruth had listened to her. Ruth knew very well the Holy Spirit had spoken to her and she knew very well that she had to go with Ruth in order with Naomi in order for God's plans to materialize in her life. So she went along with Naomi and this was the way in which she met her husband, Mr. Boaz, who ended up marrying her and her life was never the same. We can also look at the life of Esther, Queen Esther, who was in a line with so many of the beautiful women for the attention of the king. But God knew the plan he had for her because she was needed to help to prevent the slaughter of the Israelite people in those days. So I'm telling you these things because I'm so confident in the fact that God has a plan for you as well. The Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that God speaks of does not only apply to me and to Monique and to Ruth and Naomi, David and Joseph. It also applies to you. So today I'm going to invite you to a place of patience. I'm going to invite you to a place of obedience. I'm going to invite you to a place where the Holy Spirit can minister to you and let you understand the importance of waiting on God. 
God's plans. I also want to tell you that even when situations doesn't work your way, when your marriage has failed or is failing, when the doctor gave you or your family that strange, that, I mean, gross diagnosis, when you did not get that job that you applied for, even though you thought you had the best recommendations and the best credentials, God is still in that plan. You have to be patient and wait on God. Drop your time frame. Drop your own desires. Look, it's about waiting on God's plans for your life because he knows best. Let's see how best he knows. In fact, in Jeremiah 1 verse 5, he says that he knows you before you were even conceived in your mother's womb. That's a pretty long time. That's before your mom and your dad met, before they even knew that they would have, have had you. So you see, God is in charge of everything. Let's see how much he's in charge of everything. He's even inviting you to cast all your cares upon him. And he's giving you so much confidence when he tells you that you can do all things through him who strengthens you. If this is not enough, I'm not sure what else is, but I'm going to be praying for you. So I'm just going to ask you to soften your heart, to drop your own desires, and to trust God with every area of your life and allow his plans for your life to manifest. Dear Holy Father, we come to you this evening. Lord, we come to you in one accord. We come to you, Lord God, firstly because we know you are God. We come to you in a spirit of confidence and obedience, knowing that, Lord God, you are not a man and you would never lie to us. Lord God, we subscribe to those plans that you have outlined for us in Jeremiah 29 verse 11. And today we declare and decree that whatever our plans were and whatever plans anyone else have for us, those plans will be push aside to accommodate you mighty God your plans and your plans only Lord God we push back every plan of the enemy to influence any area of our lives Lord God we push back the hands of the enemy to influence our family's life or any aspect of our marriage or finances or health or anything Lord God every stronghold set up by the enemy is torn down now and every yoke is broken in the name of Jesus Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to listen to your word. And I thank you, Lord God, for using me as the vessel to carry this message to your people. Bless them now. Oh, Lord God, soften hearts. Lord God, come to them. Lord God, give them the strength to endure. Oh, mighty God, I pray that they'll have the spirit of faithfulness now and patience. Bless them now in ways only you can. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Have a wonderful day. And remember, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God has the plan outlined for your life. Nothing else can topple the plan of God for your life. Have a blessed day.